Hello traders, it's Wednesday, January the 24th. This is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. Here to give you your market wrap-up for the past 24 hours of trade, as well as an outlook for what we can expect in the coming 24 hours ahead. Well, where most of our fundamental opportunities seem to be centered, uh, it tended up, it ended up being uh, a significant disappointment. Uh, not in terms of volatility, certainly plenty of volatility, uh, but certainly a disappointment in terms of productive trend development. And this is increasingly common with high-profile event risk not conforming to the fundamental themes that we are seeing, or at least not getting traction in the ways that w that uh, really have been promoting market movement. I think quite clearly uh, with the event risk that was on the docket yesterday, uh, the most prominent opportunity rested with the British pound US dollar cross or cable. Uh, that ultimately, however, would not be a strong endorsement for an actual development of trend. Uh, you can see here, looking at the past sessions candle, this is a daily bar, that it was very volatile, wide range, but ultimately little ending change. Now, if we look at a lower time frame chart, uh, four hour, uh, you actually can see that there is a hold, all right? And in fact, I think this is a technical pattern that is worthy of a lot of interest for those that are purely technicians. You're probably going to have a break, uh, if not of uh, conviction, then at least of necessity, because we have a range high just shy of 125.50. And to the downside, there is some pretty uh, good uh, historical precedents for this former range high and now rising trend line support at about 124.15. All right, so we're going to break out of this range. It's too narrow to maintain for too long. The question becomes, and this always is the question when we're talking about uh, a technical pattern like this, is there enough conviction on the uh, production of a break that it's going to find follow through? It's important to recognize and to truly understand that if there is a break with no follow through, it really isn't trade worthy. We don't get points for being right on a technical break. We make profit when there is follow through after the break. All right, that's incredibly important to understand. It goes back to everything uh, psychological in that we're not in trade to win, we're in trade to be profitable. So. With the pound dollar, you can see that there was a significant amount of volatility. Why uh, the lack of actual ability to break uh, is so significant uh, comes back to the implications of the data that we had on the docket. Uh, for the pound side first, uh, the listing was the uh, UK Supreme Court ruling on whether Parliament had a say legally on the Brexit. Now. We have to look at this in, in the format that the markets are now uh, working with its own speculation surrounding this remarkable uh, event. In Brexit, the decision to leave the EU uh, back in uh, June 23rd, uh, the accounting was done on the 24th, um, is a significant alteration in terms of the established value of the pound. Uh, but we've discounted a lot from the sterling. The decline that we've seen from cable alone has been uh, profound and has pushed us down to three decade plus lows. Now, in other phases and other uh, data price relationships in the past, we've seen that detrimental data can actually have a positive effect on certain assets. If you recall four or five years ago, uh, the implications of bad data, all right, so weak GDP in the U.S. or weak non-farm payrolls, worse than expected, would actually encourage a rally from U.S. equities. That relationship was unusual, but not too unusual if you understood the uh, the f meaning behind it for speculators. If the data was weak, then it would encourage central banks to actually continue to feed uh, the stimulus into the system and subsequently bolster the whole reason why investors were sitting in very stretched markets. Now, there is an argument to be made with the pound that if the parliament has a say in Brexit and its negotiations, its legality and etc., uh, that it could be bullish for the pound because it, it could insinuate that, hey, parliament uh, just decides that they don't want to go through with it and they could 
put a full stop stymie on it. But in reality, they're unlikely to do that because it, go it goes against the will of the, the British people. Uh, now, they could also have a stronger say in the negotiations uh, calling for a rebuke of the hard Brexit and look for compromise uh, to find uh, a means to actually access the single market, which is a beneficial economic uh, uh, connection to Europe. Now, that is possible, and that could confer the possibility of retracing some of the Sterling's discount, all right, this massive tumble that we've had. Uh, but from where it stands now and where the markets are, are assessing the value of the Sterling is marking genuine progress, seeing the milestones, and actually uh, whittling down the uncertainties to a clear path uh, for the UK, the UK economy, UK financial system, the connection to the EU. The sterling will find its recovery when it is clear that the very many different outcomes from absolute disaster uh, to an absolute roaring economic recovery uh, is uh, whittled down to a more reasonable select uh, uh, situation of scenarios. But what this does is invites greater uncertainty. It doesn't promote a sterling rally on the assumption that, oh, Brexit can just be thrown into disarray and not actually followed through with. Uh, it undermines that confidence. And you can see the same lack of uh, conviction with this update uh, for most of the pound-based crosses. Uh, lots of volatility for the euro pound, but not much in the way of progress in the sterling's favor. Uh, the pound Aussie, the pound Kiwi, the pound CAD, and I'm increasingly interested in the pound Swiss, although high correlation to the euro-based crosses, any Swiss franc cross, uh, this is a little bit more consistent with technicals. Uh, and even the pound yen. Interesting uh, consideration for the pound yen is Parliament's say over the uh, Brexit negotiations and progress going forward. Uh, that could confer a risk on sentiment as well, uh, but that really wasn't the case for the uh, FTSE 100 nor for the pound. So this was certainly very noteworthy and it will uh, really act as a milestone for the progress that we make on Brexit and whether uh, clarity gives a sterling greater lift, uh, but it really fell short of the outcome where we could have seen the biggest move from the sterling. Uh, that's that is essentially leaving out any of the social implications, all the individual uh, positive and negatives for each outcome. That's the pure trade assessment from a speculative positioning perspective. So that was a high profile piece of event risk. On the other side of the cable was the dollars event risk. We had U US PMI, manufacturing PMI. That wasn't the market mover this past session, nor was the existing home sales. The significant update was going to be the CBOE's budget and economic forecast. Uh, what has been most market moving for the dollar lately? Well, since risk trends are on hiatus, it's not that. Monetary policy inter or interest rate expectations for the Fed uh, have significantly dropped in terms of day-to-day, uh, -day, week week-to-week impact on uh, the greenback. Really, the biggest moves that we've seen from the dollar have arisen from changes in, in trade policy and economic policy with the new president and his administration. Uh, we've seen that massive rally after the election, and now we've seen a steady retreat because the expectations of inflation, of fiscal stimulus, of infrastructure spending, tax benefits, uh, they really haven't given us clear details to actually fulfill those speculative expectations. And subsequently, some of that premium, that speculative expectation, is pulling back. So that's where we're getting most of our traction for the dollar. This is important because this tells us where the assumptions are going to be with the deficit, which is a big consideration for the Republicans, the GOP, uh, and the economic forecast, which is important to both sides uh, of the aisle. And especially with the uncertainties that uh, the proposals that Donald Trump has put up, especially during the campaign, uh, this was an opportunity for uh, clarity on what this could actually uh, afford and what it can actually do. But we don't know a lot of the details. Investors, economists, analysts, uh, they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it all depends on what, uh, when this is enacted, what the details are, who's going to support it, who doesn't. Uh, and the CBOE was not willing to uh, work up any uh, assumptions on what would actually uh, come out from these policies. So 
a missed opportunity, certainly not giving us the market movement uh, it could have, uh, but not that we expected too much from it. So now the dollar is still left in limbo and is at the mercy of Donald Trump's uh, social media accounts. Uh, looking at some of the majors, the euro USD is pulled back a little bit on its progress. Obviously, we know where the pound dollar stands. Dollar yen is more risk oriented. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, but it is now uh, locked between range up to 115.50, uh, down here at support about 1, uh, 12.50, a nice 300 pip range. Where we break from here is really going to depend on what motivates it, of course, for follow through, but it is going to be a, a bearing that I'm going to be watching very closely. Some interesting uh, technical uh, production on Aussie USD, uh, more so from the Aussie CPI figures, uh, more about that in a second. And the Kiwi USD, which has uh, projected its trend similar to the Aussie dollar, but not with the more recent correction. Uh, in contrast to the thematic opportunity that we had with the UK's uh, Supreme Court ruling and the CBOE's uh, weigh-in on budget with uh, the uncertainties of Donald Trump policies, uh, the fixed data from Australia, uh, the CPI figures that we got early in the Asia session, were much more productive in terms of market movement. The short term, it's more short term, of course, uh, but it was clearly giving us uh, a significant and clear uh, response. If you look down on a two hour chart of the Aussie USD, you can see it here. Uh, this was a pretty persistent trend, and with this past session, with the CPI response, that is a break. Now, break doesn't necessarily mean follow through, and trying to work against the dollar, which is uh, drawn in many different directions and is much more influential than the Australian dollar if uh, the push comes to shove. Uh, but it nevertheless speaks to very clear technicals, which is very attractive. Uh, a little bit more uh, opportunistic, you can look at something like the Aussie yen, although that hasn't broken. And yes, this is going to also be uh, weighed against risk trends. The Euro Aussie is very interesting. The euro is not putting up a big uh, counter uh, offensive in terms of you know, getting fundamental direction. The technical break isn't really uh, that roaring a endorsement just yet, uh, but it does have greater capability of actually covering that, that range. Uh, I am particularly uh, interested in the Aussie CAD, the Aussie Kiwi, because they're off the beaten path, even though their technicals aren't as clear, and the Aussie Swiss. Look at those Swiss space crosses, because they are, especially compared to the euro pairs, far more consistent. Uh, and the euro is not a strong uh, counterpoint, as I just said, for the euro Aussie. But look at the technical pattern here in the big medium term picture, large rising wedge. Uh, recently, we've had a series or a, a zone of resistance up here. And if you look at the shorter time frame chart, uh, let's say a two hour chart, actually, let's go up to a four hour chart. Uh, that's a nice head and shoulders. All right, the neckline. Hovers right here at about uh, 75.50, uh, but that is clean, and it is less restrained in actually deriving uh, significant swings because there's nothing really blocking the development of what could be a technical break with speculative follow-through. Other pairs are going to be hampered uh, in their follow-through, like uh, the pound dollar because it doesn't have a technical break uh, that will align to the fundamentals that would actually show that follow through. Now, the same con potential is also there with the Kiwi dollar. All right, looking at the two hour chart here, uh, you can see not as consistent as Aussie USD, but some pretty straightforward technical bearings. Uh, we have the New Zealand CPI figures coming up and also very good for short-term volatility. Uh, and uh, if you get it a currency pair, that's not going to conflict too much. Euro Kiwi or a pound Kiwi, it might prove a little bit more productive. All right, looking for those short-term trades, I think, are, is wiser in these market conditions rather than trying to squeeze out a big trend or a breakout with follow-through where it's unlikely to actually develop. Now, one of the more remarkable positions that we find ourselves in, it goes back to one of the uh, extreme wind-up pressurized trends that have not gotten any relief. Things just keep getting more and more intense, and that is risk trends. Taking a look at the Spider ETF, my favorite measure of market or invest in investors' appetite to get exposure to the quote-unquote market, uh, we did have a break to the upside. 
four hour chart you can see the wedge a nice little break to the upside but as we've talked about many times before follow through where is follow through going to be on a market that is already stretched for risk and does not have the open territory to expect a really uh, significant advance in people applying their already thin resources to extremely low returns, expecting it to con carry on. I would be dubious of a risk on exposure in even uh, discounted assets, and U.S. equities are far from discounted. This is uh, especially from the S&P 500, the index itself. Uh, it's actually at a record high. So this is a very stretched market and the confidence that we would inspire from uh, this past session it was really nowhere to be seen certainly not the structural improvements that we would need uh, to encourage confidence all right not a sudden increase in economic ac expectation not a, a significant increase in potential returns not a even a more dramatically uh, appealing business environment for which uh, ca global capital will flow into the US and provide maybe not risk on for the world but risk on for the US assets none of that was uh, available all right so it was this push towards a more extreme risk exposure and it was the VIX all right, that insurance uh, that we often look at. I think that this is dumbed down too much. It's not a fear index. It is, in essence, an insurance uh, cost for those that are looking for uh, coverage over risky situations. And I think that given the exposure on the markets and their stretched positioning, when the assumption is that there is very little uh, return to actually be made in the markets, this is the rate of return in the markets versus what you're paying to get in, that we would definitely want some greater form of insurance. But the thing is, when your return is that low, the cost of insurance becomes a little bit untenable. So complacency becomes a little bit more structurally ingrained. This VIX on a closed basis was the lowest that we've seen since July of 2014. All right, itself an extreme level, not uh, last seen since uh, before the great financial crisis back when complacency was also at its peak. Now, oftentimes when we get to these lows, uh, the lack of uh, a hedge uh, will often encourage uh, investors to look for cheaper uh, disaster insurance and uh, looking further out the skew uh, or uh, options with a little bit more distant uh, uh, strike price uh, uh, more unlikely dramatic outcomes uh, we can see that oftentimes the skew index which is a tail risk or more extreme scenario risk uh, they do often conform all right, when you have a dramatic volatility, as you did back in June around Brexit, or when you had it during the uh, election, the possibility of near-term and more uh, lasting extreme volatility or tail volatility usually rises in tandem. Sometimes uh, people see the short-term volatility implications like they did back in August of 2015, uh, but they don't really see it as an extreme follow-through, and the skew doesn't really respond. But when you have an extraordinarily low level of medium term volatility, yet people are looking for uh, extreme uh, coverage, that should draw some interest. All right? And it certainly has drawn mine. I think these markets are extraordinarily complacent. I mean, it, it goes without saying that the VIX, a flawed ETF of short term volatility, uh, is dropping to new record lows and accelerating in that effort. Uh, the shorter term more stabilized CBOE uh, short-term volatility index is still extraordinarily low as well but the markets are simply extraordinarily complacent and I would urge caution uh, there if you're certainly dead set if you're dead set about getting exposure to risk on uh, l look for something that is discounted Actually, the dollar could be construed as discounted, although you have to contend with uh, 
uh, possible updates on U.S. policy from uh, the social media account of the U.S. president. Uh, that could throw things to topsy-turvy. But if you do have a, an improvement in growth forecast, or sentiment forecast at least, uh, that could encourage a return to interest rate expectation, optimism about policy programs that are coming down the line, and help lift the dollar, which has pulled back recently. I think uh, you can also look at certain uh, isolated uh, assets like the dollar czar. A South African rand uh, is a emerging market currency which is significantly devalued. Uh, it has a high yield, and looking recently, we have some technical progress that we can mark. Um, but I wouldn't be too confident in the trend that it develops. I'm more. Uh, I, I'm more warm to the idea that if we do see risk aversion, which hasn't proven itself to be a uh, a theme that really has generated traction, but if it does, it's going to generate a massive move in the markets. And that's why I keep very close tabs on the yen crosses. Most uh, exposed uh, or carrying the greatest potential uh, of the yen crosses is arguably the dollar yen. As risk trends drop, not only do the yen crosses as carry trades or ill-suited carry trades because they're extremely low yield, uh, not only do they decline, but also the interest rate forecast for the dollar is going to be a uh, victim as well. The Fed is not going to be able to hike if the markets are stumbling. All right, they've already proven themselves time and time again very sensitive to capital markets, especially in these uh, more fence-sitting uh, conditions. All right. Now, outside of this, a couple things that I want you to keep very close tabs on: uh, the USDCNH. This relationship, I cannot stress enough, is, is very important for the global economy. Uh, this is going to redefine finance, and it could. Uh, swap superpower status uh, depending on how things actually progress over the next couple of years. Uh, but the forefront of this exchange rate is extraordinarily exposed to volatility. Uh, and China has long had a history of releasing updates in policy or the like uh, with little warning and through the most obscure channels. Well, now we have the U.S. counterpart that is willing to do uh, short notice updates on policy, and he does it pretty aggressively through social media. So this is uh, absolutely a currency pair where a wedge like this is very, very risky. Be cautious. Watch it, though, because the implications uh, will trickle down to most uh, assets. In the next 24 hours, I'm more uh, focused on uh, those big picture themes, particularly risk trends, than I am data. Uh, the s sentiment indicators you're going to get crossing the wires, the housing data for the U.S., uh, even BOE Governor Kearney's commentary are not going to tally up to the big picture moves that we'd be looking for. Uh, maybe some short-term volatility, but not really follow through. For example, if the uh, if Carney has something significant to say on his assumptions of Brexit, uh, it might be enough to get the uh, break on this wedge hourly chart for pound dollar, uh, but I would ne not expect a productive follow through. Uh, risk trends, on the other hand, while it might be a little probability we get traction on it, could be much more significant. I'll highlight uh, separately, though, there still is opportunity for that New Zealand CPI figures, as Australia's inflation figures have shown uh, that the short-term impact paired with technicals uh, can work out pretty well for uh, short-lived trade opportunities. All right. And, of course, I'm keeping eyes on commodities, most notably gold, uh, because that uh, trend line break that we had, that trend channel break, now we are uh, stuck between our convictions. One, uh, 1220 is holding up as resistance, and to the downside, uh, we're going to see if there's enough to shift momentum uh, for the bears. Uh, what ultimately d dictates this is essentially confidence in currencies. More practically, it is where the dollar goes. The gold's going to go the opposite direction, but this is genuinely one of those assets that reflects the confidence in fiat assets, assets that derive uh, their stability from government vows. Uh, and if the dollar starts to come apart, in the forthcoming uh, weeks, uh, then that's probably not going to confer a lot of uh, value redirected to euro or pound or yen because they're still f facing the same risk that they have always faced. Uh, but it can absolutely bolster gold. 
If not, things remain stable. Uh, this premium could be victim, so keep an eye on this. I like to watch these markets because oftentimes they're not just trades in and of themselves. They can really explain what's happening in the bigger financial system and for other investments that we might be planning to make. All right, we'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next rundown of these markets tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.